Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Unity San Diego. Whether you're joining us in person or live on Facebook or you're finding us on YouTube, we are really happy and grateful that you are here. And we have found, we are very happy that you found us. I'm trying to read my notes and talk at the same time. <laughs> anyway, it's just one of those mornings, It's one of general. those mornings. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> have you ever taken anything personally? I know that I have. And today, Reverend Carla will be speaking about the second agreement in Miguel Ruiz's book, The Four Agreements. The second agreement is, don't take anything personally. The name of Carla's message is, stop accepting what you really don't want. I invite you now to relax and get comfy and sing with us if you like as we sing our gathering music in the spirit of love, peace, and joy. Spirit, we ask for your guidance in helping us to not take anything personally. Words and things that others do, they're not about us, they're not about me, but rather a projection of their own reality. I ask you to help me become immune to the opinions and actions of others and to release any feelings of victimhood and needless suffering. This sometimes seems difficult, but with your guidance, dear spirit, I know my loving and accepting nature will prevail through times when I do not feel that I am enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, spirit. And so it is.
Gachami Dambam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami Om Shanti Om
And I feel that sweet release I start my day with love I start my day with peace I start my day with joy And I feel that sweet release I start my day Welcome, welcome to Unity San Diego, everyone. I'm Reverend Carla Leitner, part of this wonderfully fabulous ministerial team we have here, living in love and joy and walking in peace, and what better Sunday could we have? Well, I just want to welcome everyone who's here today. Thank you. Thank you for those who are new, those who are visiting, those who have been here, because you chose us. You could have gone anywhere, but you chose us. And you know what? I'm deeply, deeply honored. I'm so happy, and I know the rest of us are as well, that you chose us this morning. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. And thank you all those online that are joining us as well. So let's begin in prayer. Just take a moment to just whew, breathe in that energy of love, that peace, that joy. What a wonderful way, God, to start our day, to begin, to begin in love to begin in peace, to raise the vibration of the consciousness of our community, of ourselves, of the world. By beginning in love, by living in love, by walking our talk and being the change we wish to see. And so we say thank you, thank you, God, through the power of the living Christ presence. And so it is. Amen. Well, let's stand and sing again. So one of our favorite pieces of gathering music. Ready to receive the love of God. A five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Cheers. 
standing because we have our greeting now. Are you ready to receive God's love? Ask your neighbor, ask yourself online, type in, are you ready to receive God's love? I know I am. How about you? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, so thank you so much for being here. And again, we'd like to say thank you for all the new people that have found us either in the service, online, and YouTube. Our small group ministry will continue their study of the four agreements. Oops, we're going to start at thank you so much for being here today, which I already did. If you would <laughs> like to come, I'm sorry. If you would like to become a member of Unity San Diego, please sign up on the clipboard in the narthex. Board Treasurer Cheryl Sabin will be giving you a call and meet with you for a few minutes in St. Luke's Chapel next Sunday right after service. And the benefits of membership and discovering your spiritual family are purposeful living, live your purpose, unity, oneness, with the God of your own understanding. Two, a group to do life with during difficult times where you are accepted and loved, a place of community and support. Number three, you add value to our congregation with your talents and skills. Number four, you can vote for board members. You could even be a board member. You can also have your own personal prayer chaplain. So these are all benefits. And we are a family. And we're looking for people who want to have a personal, experiential relationship with the God of their understanding. We don't preach who God is or what is God is, but we lead you towards God that feels right in your own heart that you can relate to and be one with all of us. We offer spiritually uplifting, life transforming classes, events, and services. And if you have any questions today about this or anything else, um, our board member of the day is myself. My name is Linda. And you can also talk to Reverend Carla. And we'll both be over in Wrigley Hall after the service if you have any comments, questions, anything at all you'd like to talk with us about. Our small group ministry will continue their study of the four agreements. And Reverend Gretchen will meet on the third floor of the tower at 11.30 a.m. This, this morning and for the next four Sundays. Reverend Carla will hold her Zoom class Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. And Tamara Leeper will begin her Four Agreements class on Wednesday, April 17th at 10 a.m. And to find out information, just email RevCarlaLeitner at gmail.com for the Zoom links. And if you haven't read the book, I, I do encourage you to get a copy of it and read it. It's quite a great book. Our Spanish-speaking ministry will also continue their study of the four agreements on Zoom on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Please email unitydeespanol at gmail.com for the Zoom link. And today, our master drummer, Matt Manning, will be holding his drummer circle at 11.30 p.m. a.m. in Wrigley Hall. Sunday, April 21st, is our potluck and bingo. Enjoy fellowship, food, and fun Sunday at 11.45 in Wrigley Hall. And we like to eat around here, in case you haven't been around a while, but potluck is one of my favorite Sundays. You get to chat with people and support the church by buying bingo tickets and have a delicious meal. And I will say the quality of the food has gone up over the last several years. So be sure and be there. Because um, I'm not cooking and what? letting <laughs> other people cook. It's because I'm not cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever the reason, we have a great potluck. <laughs> And you can win exciting mm. gifts and prizes. And the bingo cards are $10 each, and they are reusable. So buy as many as you would like. And um, Reverend Ken will be our bingo caller on this, uh, the 21st. And this year, our annual ladies' tea will be had, held on Saturday, April 27th at 1 p.m. The theme is Under the Sea. Adult tickets are $25, and kids are 15 
We are looking for men to volunteer to serve at the tea. And we are also looking for silent auction and raffle items. Please see Marty, raise your hand Marty, in Wrigley Hall after the service for more information and to buy your tickets. Do you have any suggestions, comments, concerns, or praises? Now's the time and I'll be over in uh, Wrigley Hall and you can talk with me. You can also email a board member at unitysandiego at gmail.com and put talk to a board member. You can now call our prayer ministry at any time, and that's 619-282-7609. I have it on speed dial. It makes it easy. It's available any time. You can leave a message, and one of our wonderful prayer chaplains will call you back. You can also email us at our new address, prayerministryusd at gmail.com. And if you fill out a prayer card, um, they're available in the front of you, in the, in the chairs in front of you. And if you put your phone number on it we, or your email, um, a prayer person will get back to you by phone or email. Prayer chaplains are, are here to pray with you after the service in front of the choir pews. And today's chaplain is Melva Green. So she will be waiting over in front of the pews for you. For those watching online, there are prayer chaplains holding sacred space for each of you and, of course, everyone in the congregation. So now I invite you to please sit back and relax for our meditation hymn, Today I See Myself. is our time of meditation and I invite you to get comfortable in your seats set aside any thoughts that are running through your head those to-do lists 
those plans for tomorrow or the happenings that happened yesterday. Release them. They are gone. And open up to the beauty that each and every one of us possess. That beauty when the Christ in me sees the Christ in you. Set aside opinions, thoughts, judgments of other people. And look within. Look within at your Christ self. And breathe. Just breathe in. Release. Breathe in again. Let this go, for that is who I truly am. I am powerful, beautiful, joyful, and whole. I am perfect just the way I am. It doesn't matter about outside appearances, opinions of others, those words we tell ourselves when we're not being kind those judgments that we give ourselves. For I am, you are, we are the children of God with divine dignity, with divine divinity flowing through us. And as we open up and allow God to flow through us in magnificent ways, that spark of divinity gets brighter and brighter and brighter and becomes a flame. And that divinity pours through us in our thoughts, in our feelings, in our prayers and in our words. And so today we focus, I am divine. I am powerful and beautiful just the way I am in the silence. as I release the opinions of others, as I release any negativity I hold to myself, I am free. We are free. We are free to be the Christed beings that we truly are. And so we take our time and breathe once more and release that, knowing we can always come to this place of peace this place of remembering who we are with just a simple breath. And so we say, thank you, thank you, God, for rem reminding me that I am a divine expression of you. Thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Let's breathe again. Release. Open our eyes as we feel moved to do so and joyously sing the Jamaican version of the Lord's Prayer. So just repeat after me. Yeah. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name.
So last week, Ron sent me a text saying, hey, you want to sing this song? He goes, the lyrics fit you. Was that only just last week? It was last week. Wow. Yeah. Bad yeah. Ron. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I do a little bit better. Though. But I had other songs picked. Yeah. Because uh, I was I picked some songs based on the title of the lesson. Uh, which, what is it again? It's uh Stop accepting what you really don't want. And I was going to do a funny comedy song called uh, If You Love Me, Please Don't Feed Me, <laughs> uh, which is great on the title, but it's really not the subject. Uh, <laughs> so I picked two new songs that actually fit what she's going to talk about because I always want to find something that supports the lesson other than just amusing myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so last week I contacted Maria by email. Yeah, and he said, look look at it, take a listen, and because uh, the... the Words suit you. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and it's the second verse that I'm like feeling called out. Um, my desk is six feet under. Um, yeah, it wasn't th six feet. It's like two feet of stuff. And that is the perpetual state of my desk. Coming on three hours sleep. How many times have I come in going, guys, I have had two hours sleep. Please just bear, bear, bear with me. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I felt called out. Ah. <laughs> so this is, don't take it personally, because sometimes I may forget to call you back. <laughs> ah. One, two, three, and. Don't take it personally. It's not about you. It's not about me. doing the best we can. Thank you. Huh. Well, today we're going to talk about stop accepting what you really don't want, because you do want to always take thing pers things personally. 
I don't. You pick the right person because I take a lot of things personally. I have to process sometimes a lot. So last week we went on the first of the four agreements. Reverend Gretchen talked about being impeccable with your word. I've been trying to be kind to myself and others. I haven't always succeeded, but I've tried my best. How about you? Yeah, have you noticed a difference? Yeah, good, good. Well, this week we're talking about, of course, the second agreement, don't take anything personally. But we all do it, don't we? Even though we don't want to do it, we all do it. Not every time and not all the time, but we do take things personally. There's times like when we just can't help it. For instance, have you ever embraced the bug? Now, I don't mean like an ant or a roach or a bee. I mean that bug, 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 bug that goes on in your mind, right? That Don Miguel Ruiz calls the mitote that just keeps talking and talking and talking. It tells you that everything is your responsibility and that whatever happens for whatever event, what you wear, what you do, is going to be a personal reflection on you. And it keeps bugging, bugging, bugging in your mind. Whether it's true or not. For instance, I embraced the bug a few days ago. <laughs> Unity San Diego and Unity of Tustin were having a family picnic together. And I embraced the bug, like, oh, my God, what if it rains? What are you going to do if it rains? Are we going to be in Carlsbad? Where are we going to be? What the heck do you do in Carlsbad when it rains when you have, like, 30 kids? What if nobody shows up? What do you, you know, and I just kept on and on and on. I was allowing myself to accept this responsibility. And guess what? It wasn't even my event. <laughs> so I spent all this time embracing the bug and it had nothing to do with me, really, except I was going and bringing my own child. But what this tells me when I do that is because I have this ag exaggerated feeling of self-importance. I feel like everything is about me. <laughs> yeah, the universe revolves around me, right? When that bug, that's what the bug is telling me, that everything I wear, everything I say, everything I do, people are either loving it or criticizing it. I either have to walk on eggshells or jump around on rocks. Whatever I'm doing, I don't want to disappoint anybody, so I have to be super careful. And this can escalate to all parts of my life, to everybody's life, is if I allow the opinions of others to determine my level of self-worth. Happens, though, doesn't it? It really, it really, really does. It seems to be an issue back even in the day of the Israelites, because back in Ecclesiastes um, chapter 7, verse 21, they admonished their people, don't listen to everything people say. Wonderful advice then, wonderful advice now. So I got to thinking that this isn't just something we do at church. This isn't just something that we do in a spiritual center or we do at school. Everybody, these agreements apply to everyone, right? And that everybody takes stuff personally, not just a certain group of people. So I looked into this lady called Jen Rowland, and she's a writer, a speaker, and a mental health coach. And she talked about three insights that happen. When we stop, and she has this wonderful article, How to Stop Taking Things Personally, Break Down Your Walls, and Be Free. So I'm going to tell you about these insights. First insight, number one, I allow other people's opinions to touch my own insecurities and become my internal dialogue. All of us, we're here, but we, most of us have these aspirations to be somewhere else, right? Like, I want to be... Bigger, I want to be taller, I want to be... I always have to tease Linda because she's... I win you on that. <laughs> you know, I want to do so much better. And, you know, and, and I say this about Linda and the long legs, and let me just tell you the story of why I bring it up a lot. When I was young, I mean, I'm the shortest in the family. I wanted young, long legs. I know it will never happen. But when I first started ministry back in, like, 2018, I think, a congregant came up to me, and Linda was dressed in this beautiful, beautiful outfit. One of those outfits that short girls can't wear, that I always wanted to wear, and said, you know, you should really dress like Linda. She looks really great, so much better than you. And I'm like, thank you. If I put on that outfit, I would look like one of those pigs from Hee Haw, you know, because I'm 4'10", and you're, I don't know, you're over five feet, so you're taller than me. But, you know, it looks beautiful on her, and I'm like... I started to take that personally and because I had heard it so much as a child. And um, 
It took me a while to just let that go. My God, they work, thank God, you know? So sometimes it's difficult to, first of all, we have things that will never change like that. I can sit on the rack, the torture rack from the Middle, East, middle of the Ages and my legs would never grow, you know? But I have to be happy with me. I have to be productive by myself. This criticism that people have, this, these opinions, that's just them. I can't let it touch my, my inner dialogue, can I? And when we, people say stuff, though, it's, sometimes it takes us back to when we were a kid, like that comment did to me. Or sometimes it just really touches us, and we're like, oh, I was kind of feeling that. Oh, okay, well, maybe their opinion was right. Maybe they are right. Maybe I really do look horrible. Maybe I really am not that smart. Really, I'm really not that great. Maybe, maybe this is true. And that bug, 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 we embrace the bug, and it goes in our mind like that. But we tell ourselves that these defeating thoughts are true, but they aren't, are they? Don Miguel Ruiz says the same thing. He says, it's not what I'm saying that's hurting you. It's, the, it's that you have wounds that I touch by what I say. Do you think that's true? I've shared many, many times that when I was, and I, I don't know if I have here, but I will. I've shared many times um, in classes and things that personal appearance was very, very important to my mother. Before she died, her last words to me was, how much do you weigh? So I lived a whole childhood with that. And, you know, and it's funny now, and I'm like, well, what difference does it make, you know? But at the time, it did. And I allowed that to engulf me and to make me really, really worried. And I really believe that because what she said touched some inner wounds I had. Insight Another Two says, my need to be right prevents me from accepting criticism, especially if I'm a perfectionist, right? It can be hard to accept criticism. I like to call it suggestions, but there are good suggestions, right? I mean, I can't know everything, even if I think I do. I really can't know everything. Each one of us can't know everything. And every time somebody says something, is it a criticism or is it a, a helpful suggestion? You know, because people do want to help us to do better, to be better, and not everything is negative. But we tend to look at it that way, don't we? Yeah. Inside three, I put up walls to prevent myself from being hurt. Well... We have that defense mechanism. We put up walls. You ever heard anybody say, I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, frustrated, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. But are you fine? Are you really fine? Because you know you're not. And so, you know, we have the, this is just like a, a defense thing, though. But what we need to know is that if we take a step back and we see the Christ in other people, when we see the Christ in ourselves, we can look beyond that. Then we can look what people are saying because when they say something that upsets us, they have momentarily forgotten the Christ in us and in themselves. And so what can I do? I can hold that Christ image for them. I cannot take it personally. I can say, okay, oh yeah, you forgot who I really am. You're just looking at me. That's not me. This is not me. But inside, that's me. That's my I am. That's who I am. And you forgot. And that helps, doesn't it? Because we know we're not our appearance. We're not just who we look like on the outside. So how do we let this go and really look at, look at ourselves at the Christ and ourselves and others? Because sometimes we know it's difficult to see. I didn't break out my magnifying glasses today, but you know what? Sometimes we need them, right? Sometimes we need them when we look in the mirror. Sometimes we need them when we look at other people. And sometimes we really need to open up and allow ourselves to let things go. So the first step to take, though, is to release our negative beliefs, especially about ourselves. What we need to do is we need to have a strong sense of self-respect. We also need to have faith in God. We also need to know that there's a spark of divinity within us, that we have divine gifts that are wonderful, that, and that we all express God in our own individual way. Can you imagine how boring it would be if we all shared our gifts in the same exact way? Wow, 
I think even the flowers would lose color. I mean, it would just be all the same. But what the great thing is that we have our own selves, that we are God is working in, as, and through us in these unique ways that we are uniquely expressing as long as we remember this powerful, loving us that we have inside of us. We also need to know it's not about you. It's not about me. What other people say, that's a projection of their own reality, isn't it? That's the dream that they're dreaming. And if we become immune to, their, uh, to what they're thinking, we can be free. I remember Reverend Blair used to say, people are arguing and arguing, and you have a sign. And on the outside of the sign, it says, tell me more. So you're seeing, tell me more. I'm seeing, this is not about me. And we hope that if we have that sign up there that those conversations don't go on very long, we can keep saying, this is not about me, this is not about me. Because it's not, really. It really isn't. I always like to thank people. Um, thank you so much. It makes me feel so good that you're spending so much time criticizing me. I must be on your mind. And I appreciate that. Thank you. And then it usually makes them stop. <laughs> Again, we're going to create space. Um, when we see other people, they're not taking things personally. We know that when we take them personally, what they say, excuse me, we can never be hurt by them if we don't take what they say personally, can we? So sometimes I need to go apart. I need to go back. I need to get in my time of prayer and meditation to remember who I am because sometimes I forget. And we need to give a chance for the Christ spirit to talk through us to us and remind us of who we are. We have to respect them. They may not realize that they've hurt us. Or they've hurt us. They might not hear themselves speak. And we need to know that we can hold that high watch, like I said before, for each and every one of us. We can hold the high watch. And if we catch ourselves doing that, we just need to take that breath. That's what's so beautiful. Remember when you used to have to count to 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Oh, okay. I think now you can't do that because people think you're nuts. But you can just take that breath oh, and then speak. Or that breath and then think. God, help me remember. Show me what it's mine to do. What should I say today? Or in my case, what, I, what should I not say today? Or sometimes I have to literally, okay. But that's okay because it can bring us back to that presence within, to who we truly are. Next step is practicing self-compassion. Uh, self so I have to trust and respect that the Christ within me knows what's best for me. I can't make somebody love me. I can't make somebody honor me or respect me. But I can honor the Christ of myself. I can't change anyone else, can I? I can say, I see the Christ in you. Oh, I see the Christ in you. <laughs> I've had to do it with my kids sometimes, too, in the evenings, you know, especially when they're teenagers and you break out that, I know it's in there. <laughs> it's there. But it helps because we know that Christ's presence is in everyone. I'm going to give you a little story um, in this Four Agreements companion book that lets us know how we allow other people we allow people to help us think negatively. We allow people to, have us, to get us to accept things we don't want to accept. It's called, and this is the companion book. It's called The Judge and the Victim at Work. It says, I had a boss at work who was very judgmental. Some of us might have had a boss like that at one time or another. No matter what I did, she'd find fault with it and make a point of correcting me in a very cynical way. I really struggled with this. I'd go to work and say, why am I letting myself be abused like this? He was ready to quit my job when I read the four agreements. Over the next couple of months, I discovered I was constantly afraid of being judged. This actually allowed my boss to be judgmental. I was playing the role of the victim, and she was playing the role of the judge. I continued to react to her judgments, and in some ways it was more difficult because now I was aware of my reactions. I'd get angry or feel betrayed whenever she criticized my work. One day, the boss said something to me, and it really shattered me. What I saw was a woman who was fiercely critical of herself. 
When I finally understood she was living in her own dream and I was living in mine, everything shifted for me. In her own dream, her own self-judgments caused her to be judgmental towards me, but it really had nothing to do with me. In that moment, I felt compassion for her, and I never again took anything she said personally. Whenever she judged me, I looked at my work and decided for myself whether I'd done my best or not. Even if I made a mistake, which we all do, right? I knew that I did my best and I'd correct the problem. I worked at this office for another year and even though my boss could still be judgmental, she started to change. She began to compliment me on my work. By having compassion for her judge and putting my own victim to rest, our relationship was transformed. I think that's a really good story because I think it brings us to maybe experiences some of us have. One thing that's really helped me with this, though, and one of the tools that I use when I'm feeling like I'm taking things personally and when I don't want to accept things in life I don't want is a serenity prayer. And I'm going to say it, and then we'll say it together because I've added a couple words on it. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, all of you, the courage to change the things I can, which is me, and the wisdom to know the difference. That ought to help us to stop taking things personally, right? Let's say it together with the you and me in there. Ready? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, you. The courage to change the things I can, me. And the wisdom to know the difference. It helps. It took me a long time to realize that that's what that prayer was talking about because I spent a lot of my life trying to make changes in other people when it's impossible. And I spent a lot of times taking things personally. And I still am working on not taking things personally. And I think that may be a work that I have for the rest of my life. But at least I know what I'm looking for and I know my part. And it makes it so much easier. Because all we really want to do is be happy and loved, right? So I have a denial and affirmation we can say together. I'll say it and then we'll do it. I no longer accept what I really don't want. I am perfect just the way I am. Let's say that. I no longer accept what I really don't want. I am perfect just the way I am. I don't have to accept stuff anymore. I don't have to accept what I don't want. I don't have to listen to other people. But, and things will work out, right? You want to see the, the picnic I worried about? There you go, bubbles, great picnic, loads of kids. I worried about nothing. I left that bug take me down that personal rabbit hole and take me to a place I didn't want to go because I was taking it personally. And you know what? When I finally allowed spirit to take over, it worked out pure, perfectly. So I invite you, when you get that bug, when that bug starts bugging you, when you start taking pers things personally, just take that breath, let it go, and remember that you are divine and perfect just the way you are. Namaste. Thank you. Are we going to stand and sing? Let's stand. I'm not telling you what to do. <laughs> Don't take it personally either if you no, want. Yeah. So Marie's going to sing through it first just to give you an idea how it goes. And uh, then we will all sing.
loving open doors, don't you? Let it in. Well, next week we are going to talk about don't make assumptions. So Reverend Ken will be here to talk about ascend the assumption. Yeah. Don't make, a, don't make assumptions. It's going to be fabulously wonderful. Please come early for our gathering music at 9.48, right? That's 9.48. Well, a couple minutes earlier. So, so now is our time for giving and receiving. And if you'd like to ma- put an offering in the mail, the address is on the screen. If you're online, you can go to unitysandiego.org and hit our donate button. And we also take Visa, Venmo. I'm a commercial, but it's okay <laughs> because, you know, we, all your loving offerings and uh, blessings, they, they really, really help us to spread this wonderful message, this message that is so applicable for so many people and so important. I just think if we grew up knowing that we had that divinity within us. Wow. And we can spread that. We can spread that to kids now. We can spread that to adults. But we just have a wonderful message. So I invite you to take your offering in your hand. Or if you don't have it with you, just give us a little love from your heart. And we will say our blessing twice out loud and once in the silence. Together, please. Divine love through our gifts enlarges the blessings we give and receive. Again, divine love through our gifts enlarges the blessings we give and receive. And then once in the silence of our hearts. And Mother, Father, God, sweet spirit, we are so blessed for the offerings we know that we are about to receive to allow us to change lives, to raise spiritual consciousness, to be you, expressions of you in this world. And we are so fabulously, wonderfully grateful. We say thank you, God. Amen. Well, in case you didn't get it from the song before the lesson and from the lesson, I'm going to give it to you one more time. Don't take it personally. There was a time I was thinking down right, down low. Comparing myself to every Tim, Tom, Dick, and Joe. A secret file in my brain was of an eagle in ruin. I kept a chip on my shoulder to disguise what I was doing. People could push my mind into the ground. How could I measure up in a world so tightly wound? But one day spirit called my bluff on this game said, we're all chosen folks all the same don't take it personally your higher self is free don't you leave no room for doubt our great creator didn't make some with and some without fear it sees us as one so clear your mind get back Spirit and flow, the love of the people when we shared hello. Could it be this simple? Could I do all that by a conscious decision to don a positive hat? Then I wondered what would happen if the world would embrace a consciousness of love for the whole human race. Release the competition, the savor the like me can take it personally your higher self is free don't you leave no room for doubt our great creator didn't make some with and some without spirit sees us as one so clear your mind kick back
you'll clear your mind, kick back, and have some fun. I'm not no better than you, you're no better than me. Don't take it personally, don't take it personally. I think you got it now. I think we got it. Don't take it personally. Let it go. Let it go. We are good just the way we are. <clears throat> well, let's just take a moment now to just end in prayer. Again, thank so thankful for this offerings for our time, talent, and treasure for the wonderful family community we have here. God, you are blessing us. Spirit, you are leading us in amazing, wonderful ways, and we are so, so grateful. Grateful for the prayers also that are in our prayer box, prayers that you've written down, you've emailed, maybe you've thought them, called them in. Every word, every song, every thought is a prayer. And as we pray for the best, for the highest, we remember to look for the Christ in ourselves and in each other. And we say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Well, I'd like you now, if you'd like to stand up again, and we will sing more than enough. I also want to remind you, though, that Melva will be here right over uh, by the stuffed animals here. If anyone wants one-on-one -on -one prayer support. So... It's really good. Prayer works, and we know it. So let's sing more than enough. There is more than enough in the universe that you created. There is more than enough on a planet of sacred desire. Together, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And don't take anything personally. Namaste, friends. Bye-bye. Have a great week.
Namaste.